these are just some quick examples on how to really easily add a lot of interest to your artwork just by shifting the hue in your shading. Hi everyone, so in this video I wanted to do a tutorial about shading and lighting and a bit of color theory and basically some tips that I have for you for how to make your shading look more lifelike. This can work for traditional art as well, but I'm just doing this with digital art because it's what I'm, I feel like I'm more comfortable with digital art than traditional art and it's easier to do a tutorial digitally because you don't have to erase a bunch of times and I just find it easier. So basically I'm gonna show you with, with these apples here, just starting off, this is a sketch I have over here that I did that I'm gonna use for the tutorial, but here are some apples to the side that I'm going to kind of basically simply show you um, what I'm talking about and then I'll kind of translate that onto the drawing. So there's two different ways that I see the way people shade things and um, here's the first one that I used to do when I was first starting digital art and um, basically is you, you pick the base color and then you just make it darker and that's all you do and um, Let's say the light's coming from over here. The light is coming from over here. I'm just on the regular brush tool on paint tool side with a lower opacity and I lowered the blending persistent and dilution all the way down. That's what I do. And for the highlight, they simply go like this. Oh, I did this too. <laughs> and this doesn't look horrible, but there's definitely a way to do it better, and I'm going to show you the way that I would recommend, which is to include more than just your base color as a hue, because notice over here I was just picking darker and lighter colors within this value on the slider, but what you actually should do is be moving the slider back and forth as you choose your highlights and um, and shadows. And there would also be a bounce light here from the, from the surface, but it wouldn't just be white, but I'm going to show you that with this apple down here. This is how I would recommend you shade the apple or whatever you're drawing. And I'm not saying that the way above is wrong, it's just not the most effective way to do things. So for the apple's shadow, I would bring it down diagonally towards the black, but then I would also take this slider here and make it more towards a pink color. And I would use that as the shadow. And maybe I'll make it a little bit of a darker pink too, make it Maybe a bluish color I'll kind of bring in there. I'm sorry if you can hear the fan on my computer. It is really loud. I'm not looking up a reference photo, so this probably isn't what an apple actually looks like when you shade it, but oh well. And for the highlight, I would lighten it, so make it more towards the white, but then you bring your slider to the opposite direction. So notice how I have more than just the red within here. As I eye drop all of it, if you look to the slider, you can see it moving back and forth. This is a good way to shade things, is to use use a hue shift when you're shading. So sh don't just shift the lightness, change the hue as well. That can depend on your environment, um, which direction you go, just the way you want it to look in general. And also, since the background's green here, there's gonna be a bit of a bounce light coming from the environment. So it'll be, it's basically where the light comes from and it hits the ground here and then it bounces up towards the apple and that's going to be a little bit bluish. Now this isn't the best looking job of shading and you can um, also like get a bit more creative, say you want to add a bit of blue, so you take a dark blue color and just, I like to make a large brush and just ever so lightly brush it in like that and you'll notice this looks blue but it's not blue, it's actually a grayish pink but for some reason it looks blue because color is relative and this looks blue but it's, it's not blue <laughs> which is really really weird because when you zoom in like it still looks blue to me but you zoom in I don't know why it still looks blue it's like a purpley color and basically um, this could be even lighter if you want it let's do like the little highlight the highlight um, doesn't have to be pure white it can be a really light yellow or really light orange it doesn't not even the light red. You can make it whatever you want. And this, the lighting depends on the color of the light. So obviously with this apple, it's a warm light. And if you're doing a cool light, you'd make your lighting cool. If you're doing a colored light, you can make your lighting color. And that's where you can start to kind of have fun with lighting. And it takes a little bit of practice to like learn how exactly the light will affect your object, which is something I'm still learning, but 
I'm just gonna go ahead and clean these up by making a layer on top of everything and painting over it. The stem wouldn't be red, but I'm just gonna leave it red. <laughs> so the shadow would be slightly bluish because of the, the background is blue. And if you zoom out, it's always good to look at things from a distance. I think this one looks a lot more appealing than this one. They're both really messy and a little bit lopsided, but in terms of the colors, I prefer the one at the bottom because it just has more color to it and it's more realistic and it's just a lot more interesting. So that's my little explanation before I dive into this picture. So I'm just gonna make those smaller. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to duplicate my layer um, because I wanna remove this shading. So I just removed the shading from my sketch and this is just like a sketch I did just for fun. I'm trying out foreshortening, but I don't know if I did that properly, but I'm gonna use this to show my process for digital painting as well as talking about color theory and lighting. So the first thing I want to do is kind of fill in the whole character. So I would just select around the whole character with your selection tool like this. I like to make the selection larger. So you um, increment selection or dilate selection depending on which version of whatever program you're using. Just expand the selection and then invert it. So you just select it on the character go below it and like fill it in. Sometimes I like to do a gray color and that is your selected character. So I'm just going to start off with putting down all my base colors. So like her hair, her skin, just by um, preserving the opacity on this layer. Cause I usually paint all on one layer and I'm just gonna color over the parts. And when you preserve the opacity, you can't color outside the lines, like see this doesn't go outside, so I'm gonna color all the parts. And I like to put the sketch layer on multiply, but I like to make it kind of a dark reddish orange color, so let's see what that looks like. I think that's okay, but it depends on what kind of lighting I wanna go for, I'm not quite sure yet. Let's up that saturation, not saturation, opacity. So I just filled in her face, her skin, just by going over top of that layer that I masked off. So since I have my base colors, the first thing I want to do is just make a new layer on top of this one, make it a clipping layer. And then I just want to decide where I'm going to put my lighting. So in the initial sketch, I had the lighting coming from, uh, coming from over here. Let's not use that color. That's, so let's say this is like a warm light coming from over here. Maybe we need a background color to work with too. Let's make the background like, um, how about that? So before you actually start painting anything, make it bigger. Or maybe even when, oh, you can still see her legs. She was going to have legs, but she doesn't anymore. Now I'm just going to kind of show you what I would do with the lighting. So here's the hair and let's say it's coming from the top over, but like a little bit behind her. So there's more shadow on her. So she's a little bit backlit. That's kind of what I'm thinking for this. So I would eye drop the color of her hair and I would make the brush a bit bigger and make it lighter, so closer to white, but move it a little bit more towards yellow because it's a warm light. And I would put on the highlights with this color. So if the light's coming from over there, this would be highlighted. A little bit of this, maybe this too. And since her hair is a peachy color, I love to shade brownish colors with like pinks or uh, purples. So I'm gonna try that probably too purple. So I'm going to lower that more towards red. Fill her hair in. So the light's coming from the top and to the side. Just realized this is filled in when it shouldn't be. And then there's going to be some bounce light from the environment. So I'm going to make the bottoms of her hair a little bit of like a bluish color. I might even lower the opacity of the sketch layer a little bit because it's looking kind of dark. So as you can see, if you use the eyedropper tool and go from the highlight, it's yellow, the mid-tone, it gets more red, more red, and all the way to it pinkish red. So it's not just peach, it's yellow to pink, but you can tell that her hair is like a peachy brownish color. And that's because the lighting is warm, so the like, highlights would be a different color from the actual hair, and then the shadows would be a different color from the actual hair because 
of the lighting as well. It's a warm light and the environment in affects the color a bit because of all the bounce light, which is basically when light hits a surface of a different color, it kind of bounces up and reflects on back onto the person or whatever you're drawing. And it makes that kind of absorb that color, I guess, like it kind of projects onto that color. And also color, like I said, is relative because down here that looks bluish looks like a really really grayish blue but it's actually pink the way it looks really depends on what colors are next to it so i don't like to make the eyes pure white especially if you're shading it you're going to be painting it um i like to make them a bluish gray kind of like that that might be a bit too dark and then the upper eyelash would cast a shadow on the top part of her eye and then the white of her eye would have a highlight down here because that's where the light would hit the face has different planes on it, so I'll kind of draw them out with a color. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, it goes out, in, back out. That's kind of what it does. And the cheeks kind of come out too. And the chin comes out, and the nose has a shadow under here because it kind of sticks out. And of course, if the eyebrows are down like this, there'd be a shadow next to the eye. And I like to make the parts beside the eye kind of red-ish just because of the pigmentation of the skin. So the forehead kind of sticks out, so it would catch the light and then it kind of goes in. And since her eyebrows are very angry, um, there'd be like kind of a ledge here, so there'd be more shading here. I like to make the cheeks more red in general, just because cheeks have a bit of rosiness to them. And down here is a bit lighter. And underneath the lip is shading and another highlight here and some more shading underneath the nose. So I'm just gonna undo all of those scribbles. <laughs> And skin has more than just a skin color in it. Skin has like pinks in it, purples, yellows. Depends on the lighting. I want her cheeks to kind of catch the light, but also be pink. So I think under under her, her eyelids have shading too. So underneath her eye would have a bit of shading. And every time I darken a color, I like to shift the hue a little bit. Just to add as many different colors. Not as many different colors, but just to add color variety within everything. And this cheek would pick up some lighting like this because the cheeks are kind of triangular when they pick up lighting they're kind of triangular so i like to keep that in mind the nose is like a little triangle also and since it's kind of a bluish background i want to add in a little bit of that blue color so kind of like near the bottom of her chin i'm kind of adding in the bluish color just to bring that in because it is part of the background and it would kind of affect her skin and maybe up here I'll add it too, because I think that would go a bit nicely. I'm just going to add a little highlight underneath her chin here for some reflected light and under her nose. This is still a very messy sketch. Her eyes kind of look crazy at the moment. So make sure that when you're shading things, that you keep in mind the color of the lighting and the color of the things around the object. And don't just color it all with the same color. Try to incorporate different colors into it. Another cool trick you can do is I like to, if you want some really dramatic lighting, I like to take a soft brush and go to like a dark purpley blue color and say you want backlit lighting. So just kind of color over the character like this. And then you want to erase away, lower the opacity on the eraser and erase away the parts that you want there to be light. really big eraser to do some large areas, more blended. And this is kind of really limited dramatic lighting. Um, and then you want to lower the opacity on your multiply layer. And that way the, the shadows are colored but the light is remaining colored from what you did previously. And that looks really bright now, but this is like a way to get some dramatic lighting um, to kind of start it off and then you can paint over it and um, blend it out and stuff. But this is like how you would do it in a sketch. And I have a lot of, this is a lot of fun, like playing around with um, with lighting like this. I just really enjoy it. <laughs> and you can, you can change the color of the shadow by going to filter, hue and saturation, and just kind of, it kind of changes the whole mood of it. So this is like dramatic lighting, but if it was like really warm light, even warmer, 
I kind of like this look. And then you can go even further and make like a, hmm, let's make this overlay and kind of get like an orangey, light orangey color. You can add some glow to it like that. Overlay is a really, I feel like I said this in another video, but I love overlay. It adds some really nice digital effects and you can add some really cool atmosphere lighting kind of stuff. And I like to also make this a cool light. So something like that can look really, really cool, really interesting lighting. And look how, look how dynamic that looks compared to this, which doesn't have a lot of contrast yet. So you just add this multiply layer and selectively take out the parts that, that you think the light would hit and then add an overlay layer to kind of add some atmosphere and it can look pretty cool. Just always keep in mind the direction of your light source and try to think about where the light would hit. So I hope you found this video helpful. This is how I approach color theory and lighting. Um, and like these are just some quick examples on how to really easily add a lot of interest to your artwork just by shifting the hue in your shading because that is a really important thing to do and it's not it's not the most difficult concept because when I discovered it, I discovered it on DeviantArt through a tutorial and it was like a whole new world opened. I was like, oh my gosh, I can actually change the color when I shade, what? And it was like my art just got a lot better. So make sure that, that you're taking into account the color of your light and as your shadows get darker, change the color of them. Um, there's bounce light, so like reflected light from the areas that the light hits and the light will hit that area and reflect onto your character and create a kind of secondary light source. Play around with light sources, look up reference photos um, for different angles of light because it can just be really fun to experiment with. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. Um, let me know any more tips you have in the comments or any questions. And uh, if you want me to do any, any future tutorials, let me know, I'll try to do them. So I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching.